Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about all the books that I read in July and I managed to finish 12 books in July which is quite a lot so I will try to go through them quite quickly. Now in July I read I participated in the Game Nightathon hosted by Cleo at the channel Bemused Bookworm. And so the goal was to read shorter books and kind of fill a like board with like the books. So I didn't do too well with that one. Um, there were some people who filled the whole board. I managed to fill about half of it, but I was still very happy with it. And I read a lot of books. Um, I read a lot of books from my physical TBR, which is always amazing because usually a lot of my reading happens through audiobooks and stuff like that. So let's jump into the books. And the first book I finished was a chunker. <laughs> Unfortunately, I only had about half of this left for July and that is Speaking Bones by Ken Liu. This is the last book in the Dandelion Dynasty series and I did a whole reading vlog for the whole series. So if you wanna hear all of my thoughts for that, you can go to that. But this is the last installment and unfortunately as a conclusion to this series it didn't quite work for me. The ending was just not what I wanted to see. It felt very easy for the kind of journey that we went on with these characters. There is a lot of like suffering in these books and I felt like the ending was just not matching up to that. It was too easy. It was too like optimistic and it just didn't match the rest of the series. So I was a little bit disappointed by that. I gave it four stars. I would still highly recommend the series. I think it's one of the best fantasy series that we currently have out there, like from the last couple of years. And yeah, it's just amazing and highly recommend. So if you don't know anything about this series, very quickly, it is a kind of Chinese inspired uh, high fantasy where we have this island world. It was once many kingdoms, then it is an empire. And in the first book, we kind of see the empire crumbling and then a new kind of dynasty starts. And that's what we explore more in the following books. Um, a lot of characters, a lot going on, political, but also um, very gruesome things that are happening. And there's a lot of trigger warnings, but also like lovely things. Um, there's some love stories in here that I really enjoyed. So yeah, just that's just a lot. These books are massive. Then the next book I finished was my audiobook. My Dearest Darkest by Kayla Cottingham. This is a book that I got to listen to for free and I had started it for a readathon I did in June all about uh, queer books where I for some reason only read sapphic books. But um, this one is a kind of like a dark academia but I wouldn't like over interpret that. We are following a girl who gets into this very prestigious school where she is um, playing the piano so that's kind of like her special thing that gets her into this school and when she gets there she gets introduced to this group of girls who are like very popular and when they're down in like some kind of like tunnels that are under the school they find this mysterious being that grants them wishes but it might not be a force for good, I guess. So that's the kind of like setup. We have a sapphic relationship in that book, but overall I just gave it 3.5 stars. I felt like some things were explored quite well, but then um, this was also very much focused on struggling with your sexuality and it wasn't quite what I went into the book for. I thought it would be more like dark academia horror and the kind of horror elements take a very long time to really play into it all. And I felt like the dark academia vibes were just very subtle. Like I expected just more of that, I would say. Then the next book I read was Heartstopper Volume 2 by Alice Oseman. 
I have watched the show before I read the comics, but I got these as a gift, so I'm still reading them as well. And this was just lovely. Um, I still enjoy the show more than the comics because I feel like it is more well balanced in the storytelling with um, the side characters as well. This um, comic series focuses way more on the main characters, I guess. But yeah, in this one we are following um, Nick and Charlie and it's kind of their love story. So it is a uh, kind of gay romance, um, two boys falling in love. And I really, really appreciate these um, comics just because I enjoy how the struggle with your sexuality is portrayed in here because Nick actually um, has to come to terms with being bisexual um, and it is not done in this like stereotypical way where he's pushing away his lover to figure things out but he's just very caring and very sweet but he's also just dealing with a lot of things in his head and I really like the portrayal of that. So I gave this one I think 3.5 stars as well and I would recommend these if you're interested but I would recommend the show a little bit more. Also I have not started watching the second season yet, I'm trying to save it for bad days I guess um, but I'm very very excited we have a second season now. Then the next book I finished is a German book. It's called Die Letzten Tage des Patriarchats by Margarete Stokowski. So this is a feminist essay collection by a person who is quite famous in Germany for writing these feminist like essays in like newspapers. This is a collection of stories starting in 2015 no, 2011 up until 2018 and this was interesting because um, you have this kind of like look back at what was going on during those times. Some of the things I had already completely forgotten because like it's 10 years ago now um, but yeah it was still kind of interesting. I still expected something completely different from the title of the book so I was a little bit disappointed by that and I feel like if you read a lot of um, newspapers in that kind of direction, it's not anything new. There wasn't anything that I learned from this. So in the end, I gave it three stars. Then the next book I finished was another audiobook and it was 12 Nights at Rotter House by J.W. Ocker. This was also a book that I got to listen to for free on Audible. So I had it on my wish list and I thought I'd just give it a try. It is quite short and fit the readathon so that worked out. In this one we have a haunted house story. We are following an author who is writing these non-fiction books about haunted places. He's kind of run out of his luck and so this is like his last straw basically. He's going to Rotter House which is actually called Rotterdam Mansion and um, this is just a old house that it was kind of like a um, like a hotel and then a lot of like terrible things are supposed to have happened there and so he's looking for anything that might happen there and so his grand plan is to stay there for 13 nights so he has a catchy title for his book um, but as you can guess from the title of the real book 12 nights at Rotter House it's not going to work out so well. Now, what I did not expect with this one is that very early on in the book, his best friend shows up and there has happened something between them. You can tell that there is something going on. They haven't spoken in a while, but he's now there to support him. So it's also about this mystery of what happened between these two men. And I did enjoy a lot of this book up until we figure out what happened between them. And then I was just like, okay, this is about, you know, masculine fragility and Oh, I don't know, I was disappointed. So in the end I gave it 3.5 stars. I think that if you're really into scary horror you won't like this. It's more on the funny side but it definitely has some haunted house vibes that I enjoyed but as I said just the conclusion it was not for me. Then the next book I read is Soul of an Octopus by Simon Montgomery. This is a German copy that I got as a gift. And this is a non-fiction book about octopuses. And you can't see that right now, but right up here, 
is a giant picture one of my friends painted for me with an octopus because I love them so much. And actually last night I had a dream that someone gifted me an octopus and it was sitting on my lap for the whole dream. <laughs> it was so lovely, I really enjoyed that. So yeah, this is a non-fiction book. We are following the author while she explores her relationship to octopuses. So we have a little bit of like facts about them as well, sprinkled throughout the book, but it's much more about the connection that she builds with these animals and the whole question of how do animals think? How do they perceive the world? Can we say that they have a soul and stuff like that? So it's not uh, in the sense of you're learning a ton about octopuses, it's more, kind of like these relationships that she builds with these animals that she meets during this time. And I thought it was really interesting. I really like that the author is already a little bit older. I think she's in her 50s. Um, and for example, she still learns how to scuba dive to uh, actually get to see octopuses in their natural environment and stuff like that. So I thought that was really, really cool. And I just liked um, that this book was like very easily readable and I did enjoy this kind of exploration of just the relationships that we can have with animals and how they differ from relationships we have with other people. So um, yeah, I really enjoyed this. I think I gave this 3.5 stars as well. I actually gave it four stars. That's even surprising for me now. <laughs> so yeah, it's between a 3.5 and a 4, I would say. Then I finished another audiobook, and that was Bryony, Bryony and Roses by T. King Fisher. Again, a book I got to listen to for free on Audible, so that was great. And this is T. King Fisher's retelling of Beauty and the Beast, but it's more like a alternate version, I would say. Because in this one we don't have Belle, but we have Bryony. And Bryony um, belonged to a family that were quite rich, but then her father kind of fell out of favor, and so she and her sisters are now living more poorly, but Bryony is a gardener, so she keeps her family alive with gardening. And then one day she is on a trip in winter and the snowfall gets really, really heavy and she gets lost with her like struggling pony. And she ends up in this mansion that comes out of nowhere. And there is this beast and he basically tells her you're allowed to go back to your sisters to tell them that you're gonna be gone for a while and then you can have to come here and live with me. <laughs> so um, we have ba basically this like um, Beauty and the Beast vibe, but uh, yeah, as I said, it's just a different character and with that comes a very different character dynamic, also with the beast. And I really enjoyed this. I had so much fun with this book. I'm not the biggest fan of like the classical fairy tale retellings, um, but this one just really worked because it is so much T. King Fisher <laughs> and so little the fairy tale that it originally was. So I loved that. I had so much fun with this book. And in the end, I decided to give it four stars, which was great because this was one of her books that I felt the most unsure about and that I probably wouldn't have picked up if I hadn't had the free access to it. So seeing that even that was a win now makes me so excited for all the other T. King Fisher books. Now we're getting into the part of the wrap up where I struggled a lot. And the first book for that is The Children of Hurin by um, J.R. Tolkien. This is one of the stories that is already in the Silmarillion, but it got its own book, so the story is more spread out. We explore the characters a little bit more and stuff like that. So luckily, this was still a very quick read, but not one that I enjoyed a lot. This is my least favorite tale in the Silmarillion, so when I got this as a gift, I was already like, Am I gonna actually like this? I don't think so. And the reason why I don't like this story is the main character, Turin Turambar. I just, I can't with his character. He is just so proud and doesn't listen to any advice from his friends. And he actually gets like everyone around him killed. And 
then he just goes off to find new people to endanger <laughs> and I just his character is so frustrating to read about so in the end I decided to give this three stars um, if you don't know about the story in this one we are following a family where Hurin is kind of the father figure he has three children in the end um, one of them is Turin and then two daughters one daughter dies young and the other daughter never gets to meet her brother um, because they get separated and basically Hurin pissed off like the big evil guy Morgoth and so Morgoth puts a curse on his family and so you could be like yeah everything Turin goes through is because of that curse but honestly his personality is not helping his cause so yeah three stars for that and um, it's not my favorite. But then it got even worse when I put, picked up The Hands Worst Times by Sharon Dougal. I don't know how to say his name, I'm very sorry. But this book was just so hard to get through. This is a book that I got in a book box many, many, many years ago. And I thought this readathon would be the perfect time to pick it up. But... Um, it's, it's not for me. This book is set in the 80s in Great Britain and we're following an Indian family and we have um, a family with a lot of children, I think five children, three daughters, two sons and at the beginning of the book the youngest son is killed during riots in an accident and so we're following this family who is kind of struggling with that but then struggling with everything else as well. So the father is an alcoholic and he is um, rude and violent towards his family. The mother is trying to keep it all together but she also has this kind of like um, almost like like obsessive compulsion to clean the apartment all the time. And then with the daughters, we have one that is gay and um, experiences trauma because of that. Another one is uh, kind of getting involved in these more left-wing um, uh, yeah, youth groups that are trying to bring about change and she gets raped there. And then we have the third daughter who uh, is basically the lucky one and then we have the other son, son who is really struggling with losing his brother and um, yeah so there's like so much going on in this book and it's 240 pages so none of that is dealt with in a satisfying way for me. It's basically just a book portraying how horrible the 80s were and it was just miserable. It was a miserable read that I did not enjoy. I did not have a connection to any of these characters because it felt like they were all just there to go through trauma. And yeah, I did not like it. I gave it two stars. Then I also finished another audiobook and that one was Bone Shot Daughter by Andrea Stewart. This is a new series that I just started and this one was great. I really enjoyed it. Now in this one we have a fantasy world where we have an emperor and his kind of magic relies on bone shards. So every citizen of the empire has to give up a shard of bone from I think behind the ear at a certain age and then they all go to the emperor and he can use them to create constructs so these are basically like animal parts sewn together and then they're kind of fueled through the bone shards and that takes the life energy of the people so you never know when your bone shard is going to be used but at some point it's going to suck all the life out of you so um, in this world we follow different perspectives i think we have two main perspectives one is lin the daughter of the emperor who is trying to get the favor and love of her father but also there's a lot of secrets and she's also trying to learn the bone shard magic and then we have Jovis who is a smuggler who through some circumstances gets into the business of saving children from getting their bone shards removed and then there's other perspectives as well that are not quite as prominent but yeah we travel through this world, there is an adorable animal companion, Mephi, love him, he's everything. So I had so much fun with this book and I gave it four stars.
So then I got to the point where I really wanted to kick some ass in the last days of the readathon. So the next book I picked up and read very quickly was Blackout by Donia Clayton, Nick Stone, Tiffany D. Jackson, Ashley Woodfolk, Angie Thomas and Nicola Yoon. This is a collection of six short stories written by these authors respectively and they are intertwined in a way. They're all love stories that happen during a heat wave in New York City when there is a big blackout one night and then we have just like different couples or different scenarios where um, it deals with love and um, just these uh, young black characters finding love or finding also things about themselves that they didn't know yet and stuff like that. So I really enjoyed this. I thought it was very um, successful in what it was trying to do, telling these um, stories of love and joy and I gave it four stars. My favorite story is the Angie Thomas one, that one I gave five stars, I really loved that. So then my last book was me trying to redeem the Indian family stories and this one is called Gacha Gotcha. This is also a German edition that my best friend gave me. And this is very, very short. And in this one, we are meeting an Indian family, mainly one particular person and then his like family connections and this is a family that lived in more poverty or like very low wealth um, but then because of something that the uncle of our main character did they get into riches very quickly and then we follow this family um, we see the kind of changes that that brings about and we explore the very nasty characters um, of these family members so we have the mother of the main character then his sister as well as the father and the uncle. And all of these characters are just horrible. They're horrible people and we are kind of following them. In the second chapter, we get kind of a little anecdote where it's completely clear how this family works and that they're just bad people. Um, and yeah, from that point on, was I was like, okay, I guess I'm prepared for what's gonna happen now. And so, yeah, I did um, like it in a way, but it's also not something that will stick in my mind a lot. Um, I gave it three stars in the end, mainly because the ending is a little bit fucked up, but also very open. So there is something that our main character thinks happened, but we never actually learn whether it really happened. But just the idea that this is what he thinks it fam his family would do is, is enough of an ending, I would say. So yeah, three stars. It was fun for um, such a short book and a look at like very, very despicable people. Okay, so that was my July reading a lot of books. I'm very proud that I reduced my physical TBR last month because that's always my main goal. I would love to hear what your favorite book of July was, whether you've also participated in Game Night-a-thon and I will talk to you very soon. Bye!